actually banned. So you don't have Is it a Grok? Yeah, oh, there you go. all right. Yeah. So it ends up St. Lucas decided instead of going for a full dive composition, tell you what, let's just change it back up. We're also going to play the push. On the cards, CLID, they have one foot in the castle of the kingdom. But now it is the time for the kingdom to once again reinstate their oppression. We're gonna stay their claim to try and get that early game dominance. We were expecting something completely different, man. With the with the bands showing up earlier, we thought an assassin was gonna show up. But once again, it's a jungle, utility jungle, fighter jungle showdown here. And Fabian and Susogen both duking it out. But now it's a very different approach. RRQ seem to be doubling down on that early game option. This Aerithel is picked, right? And when we saw it, Skylar yesterday with the with the, uh, with the Mathilda and the Aerithel playing around. Do you, don't you think it's situational? But before that, the emblems are actually. Ooh. Wow, well, Litho taken by Fabian there. Emblems by Andy Home showing the tenacity for your Heskill, respecting the, the aggression coming in. Dairon with the agility and the Festival of Blood, so he's trying to play that massive frontline role, but ooh, cool. This is the thing, it's still a skill matchup in the bottom lane, man. It's not entirely a win for the Aerithel. You do have an advantage, in a way, for poke and wave clear, but Aaron can can do what he's doing best, laning. Yeah, back to my question, though. The Aerithel Matilda combo in this scenario, do you like it? I mean, sure, they have a high loss, like a charge at them, and as well as the Alpha, maybe, but... Oh, Skylar! Good juke, but damage still. Oh, can't really ignore that. Skylar, almost taken down, has to pop and sprint. Sutsu Jin, rotating over, has a deadly catch. Witty, bit down by the Sharks! Wow, out of nowhere, Sutsu Jin playing it aggressive, matching the Alpha, getting the gold buff as well. And on top side, even with Aran trying to be sneaky, avoid laning, cutting the wave, Dairon actually came in to punish him, kind of equalizing the situation. Looking kind of okay for RRQ, but the big moment is this turtle fight. Can they actually get it done? A lot of zoning tools for RRQ. It's tanky at frontline, technically. The Team Liquid has a lot of damage and a lot of true damage at that, and more sustain. You know, TLID, they want to contest this turtle. And Yaskiel already level 4, has the RWM to Ooh. just push them away. But now oh. Rin's coming in. Crimson Beacon, a flicker backwards as well. Fabian with the Spear of Alpha over Rin's. Now the Glorious Pathway to the back as well. Now he's going to be the Infernal Pursuit all the way to Witty. Sutsu Jin able to utilize the distraction to go for it. Rin's still able to Rin? save Witty very low. Dairon on the chase. Infernal Whoa. Pursuit from Dairon. And he gets the kill down. Aran is next on the chopping block. And it's RRQ with an amazing win in the first turtle fight. They strike hard and the cavalry off their horses. Three kills in three minutes, and they get the turtle as well. We've seen this before, dude. The Sushin, well, deceptively tanky and doing a lot of damage, a lot of distraction in the early game, diving to the back line. It was looking so weird, so wonky, and we've, we've seen it go wrong before, but it worked out right there, and diving on the Fulvius, man, putting it down. RQ doing a great job utilizing the strong pick that they first picked, but now can they maintain it? Can they find more? And now, the Raphael are picked by in the hands of Witty. Yesterday, Key picked it up as well. Now it's in the hands of Witty. What are the comparisons you could draw in this composition, at least, to fight off RQ? Oh, oh Ooh, wait, what? Witty pops the flicker. Okay. Every time I ask a question, something happens, but that is not what I expected. <laughs> Maybe the Circuit Eagle from Edoc to kind of get information, trying to find control. And with that moment, with that exchange of, uh, of resources. They're gonna go for the third goal, but look at this. Oh, Crimson Beacon, Witty gun down again. Rins with the Lantern Flare, Aaron is gonna enter. Entropy, and now it's gonna be Fabian with the flanks as well. The Spear of Alpha, able to find another kill over. Super 2, Fabian caught in the bad spot. Sutsujin, there's a bit too much damage. Now Yehezkiel oh! against Rins, flicker out. And Yehezkiel gets the kill. Three for three at the end of the day. Comfort zone for RRQ. They're able to dive into the tier two turret and force a fight with the team look at ID's waiting hands. RRQ, is this the lead they're looking for, Arashi? It was looking so good. I thought the tower was definitely gonna fall, but they kind of overextended a bit. Team look at ID, the fact that they were able to actually get some somewhat of an equal trait there is definitely concerning. But all right, right here, there's so much control over the turtle. You can see Fabian immediately just going for the clear, going for the other resources top available top on the map. But look at the duo on the top side. Yeah, 1v1. They run with a flicker. That's a mistake. Oh. Skyler will capitalize on that mistake. A solo kill. Tyron all alone. You're able to flicker out of the Holy Baptism, but you cannot flicker out of the glorious pathway. TL will get a trade.
What is it? With Team Liquid ID and their flickers in game number two. That was a miscalculation from Adam Chicky. He certainly came out of nowhere. And looking at the items here. Whoa, hang on a minute. One v one v one. Deadly catch now. The spear versus the shot. Sutsujin soloed. Fabian getting the shutdown now. Give the glancer flare to throw him back around. Fabian. Trade it back again. Wow. That's Sutsujin 3 and O oh, taken out by Fabian though. So they're both having three kills, but in theory, Fabian shouldn't be able to win it out there. And from that engagement there, Skylar also wasn't able to get the turrets. So both teams are hanging on to their early game objective. Oh, very, very well. Yeah, the map is again whipping this time around. Aaron Chiki has the entropy backwards. Circle Eagle knocking him up. Aaron very then low, and now the latch up there on him. Skylar with a heavy crossbow takes them down under the tier one up top. The power of the Aerithel Matilda combo this time around. The Crown Prince has company. And even with the Has Claws, there's no need for Skylar to go back. He can stay on the map indefinitely. No mana cost. Now Akira using it as pressure. He's gonna for sure be able to get the tower on the top side. But even on the bottom side, Tsutsujin being very active here. Which one will Team Liquid actually move towards? No. Ron will have to address the wave created by Tsutsujin down bottom. But this just gets scarier for Team Liquid ID. But in this scenario, Arashi, in this sort of circumstance, Ooh. can they still bank on the Natan? I think they definitely still can. The Dino, Dino Oi! Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. Ooh. That's disgusting. Oh, man! Gee. That's just, just one war axe. That's just one war axe, man. Around in the back now, looking for it. Oh! Spear of Alpha missing the glorious pathway. Dodged away from down the circling eager to go onto our round. Meanwhile, Diamond right in the back. Forcing the real world of Palagium will be shredded down, and it will be a trade one for one. But Witty takes the kill. It's an XP for an XP. RQ get all the turtles in game two. I think the big deciding factor here is the fact that both uh, frontliners, the Hylas and the Phobias, one can kind of delay you, right? The Hylas is too beefy to kind of push through, but the Phobias can actually take you out, having a lot more damage built into the kit. So now our Q can actually be a bit more aggressive because they know that Dyron, however you want to spin it, becomes a bigger threat compared to Aran on the Hylas. And that single advantage is allowing them to just control more ground. But again, Team Liquid have that late game. Circling Eagle, Aran, no vengeance this time around. The Holy Baptism. Again from Witty, only landing onto Dyron. Yeah, and the Phobius can somehow skip the high loss as well, right? You could practically target the backline of DLID indefinitely as EDOC just opens up the map for RRQ. Now the question becomes for DLID, how do they want to deal with this Phobius, Arashi? You just have to wait until they get a bit more damage, but even then, with the Vengeance, it's going to be difficult, so they have to kind of play the back and forth. That is what we theorized earlier with that Raphaela pick. They wanted movement speed, but look at Rins. Comes in Beacon, Aran still trying to go for the fence in the mid lane. Pops the Glorious Pathway and dives all the way to the back. DLID, is this a mistake? The Holy Baptism catches on the Skyler. Oh, Diamond's free hitting. Now, two fights going on. Diamond able to get that Infernal Pursuit. Fabian very low. The chase around Shiki! And what? with the flicker forward, only to get gunned down by Skyler. The Stallion misses his flicker yet another time. RRQ, all hands on this game. 6,000 gold advantage. Is this a mental bug you're talking about, Mirko? Playing, this, playing the Natan against the infamous Natan in the ID. A lot of moments here where it seemed so close yet so far. Skylar on this uh, Irithel that really shouldn't be doing so, so well. 5-1 and 5. The mobility allowing him to just be oh, so aggressive. Holy Mathis and no under the turret. Oh, well, Skylar now makes a mistake. Gets caught by the real world manipulation. And TLID, they'll have an advantage. Skylar shut down 20 seconds. And it will be a Lord that is in the land of dawn. Up and ready. Oh, mistakes after mistakes. Both from the marksmen of their respective teams playing today. Now the Lord though, they want to blitz it. But I think they're just waiting for Skylar to respawn. To get even more source of damage. Oh, that burst, man. Circling Eagle Force the Vengeance out now. Oh. And the catch Witty disappears straight to the back now with the Crimson Beacon. Able to get some damage down as Fabian goes and gets rid of the back as well. Here on Shiki with the entropy forward. Fabian slices through Tyrant. Yes, kill. Gets the kill back, but Sutsu Jin shoots Aran down. Another two for two. Skyler back online. Heavy crossbow onto Fabian. We'll use the spear of Alpha defensively, but the circling eagle to the back will be able to find two. Aaron getting gunned down. The heavy crossbow is too much for Aaron to handle. And the kingdom again are able to make it work. 
Team Liquid ID overzealous. They saw that momentum, they saw the mistake from Skylar. They thought that they had that Lord for sure, but they overstayed. Araki were able to find a relatively equal trade, and the moment Skylar returns, that was a signal to retreat, but the cavalry just did not notice it. Here we go! Oh, almost just one shot in. What is the damage? Yikes! A lot of damage from the kingdom. They're angry. They don't want to give up their throne that easily. They don't want the castles to be usurped by the stallions now. And on Shiki, 1-5, oh. Astinatan. Is there still a late game angle? If it goes long enough, there's definitely a late game angle. At 10 minutes, 6,000. We saw that Geek and were able to come back from such a deficit, but our Q, what is the plan here to crack open the base? This is the Nathan Yif combo with the Hylos. They do have Siege, they have the Erythel, but the Mage, it's a Sushin. How is the, what's the plan here for Keskyu to really crack open this base? It might be some kind of dive. Yeah. It's more of a zoning mage with the Zeusin, right? You want the CC to keep on going, but the Lord will blitz and march forward. Lord of the bottom lane? No, first Lord, so should be able to defend this again. It's a Yeev and an Atan combination. Last time we saw, I would think it was day one. Fnatic Onyx having a 12,000 gold lead, but <laughs> struggling to end against a Natan and a Yeev. Now we talk about it, right? The Natan and the Yeev, two of the best base heroes for, for defense in, in this patch, in the, in the playoffs at least. Will Arcu be able to topple down that foundation for TLID? Oh man, well, we'll have to see. Looking at the items right now, already the glowing one and the divine glaive. So he's Yeheskiel here, not playing to shred the front line. He knows that Iron's gonna be tanking up too much damage, too much sustain. He's gonna focus more on having burst damage available in case Skylar makes a mistake, in case Weedy finds a great, uh, the, a, uh, a great stun onto Skylar, he can just follow up and deal a ton of burst damage. For Aran, uh, for Iron Shiki, it's only about scaling up here. Holy Crystal almost completed. It's gonna be a massive there you go. spike. But the Radiant Armor is completed for Dairon, so again, it's kind of neutralized for a bit. Maybe one more item will be required before Team Liquid ID can really claim to have that shredding potential. Yeah, he has his Holy Crystal ready for Aron Shiki. Now the big problem is, is he able to exert the damage? Because the problem is, he has been, he has been overstepping, overextending and creating, you know, minute plays that is not necessary flickering forward uh -huh. with the Entropy as well. That has been the criticism towards him since yesterday, even since two days ago in that match against Pigatron Alpha as well. Now it is a matter of how he will hold himself when the time comes. Now this is a delicate situation for Team Liquid ID. RRQ, just want to get the Lord, try and get some structures, that's fine. But Team Liquid ID, if they fail here, they falter and lose their front line, there's a lot of ground that RRQ can chase them through, and there's a ton of mobility available for them. Yeah, this Lord is important. 7.9k gold lead, hands of RRQ, they look to even subjugate TL ID further. They look for the zone, and here goes the Circling Eagle. Mm -hmm. They spawn David and push Fear of Alpha, he's like, he's like, he's like, Might look for Whoa. the Savage, but it's way too far. Yeah, Heskiel still riding into the dying night, but the kingdom is here. They want to reinstate their oppressiveness towards the cavalry. Oof. A lot of damage, a lot of burst. Yeah, Heskiel going for the play. RWM on the Skylar, very low with the Wishing Lancer, but again now within for the pursuit. The Demonic Force onto them. RRQ will level the game, will level the series in a best of seven. Oh. It is one to one. Woo! The kingdom, they will not go down without a fight. 1-1, one, one. they equalize the score. TLID, the revolution, still on hold. Wow, what a recovery from RRQ. We saw the draft, we kind of died.